James Warham has made more sailing dreams come true for more people than any other yacht designer in history. In June 2016, I had the pleasure of meeting James Warham and Hanukkah Boone at their design headquarters in Cornwall, England. My name is Stuart Coates, and just over a year earlier, I had sailed one of their designs, the Tiki 38 Lucky Fish, around the Cape of Good Hope and across the Atlantic. I was so impressed by the boat, I vowed I would meet the designers one day. I brought along my brother Andrew, who has been a painter and inventor since he was 16, and lives not far from the Warrams. Did you get your inspiration before you were sailing? around the world for this design? Was that, did that come before or was it when you were out? What there? happened was when I was 16 years old, the war had just begun. There was a book on the shelves in the public library of Manchester of a Frenchman who just before the war had built a Pacific double canoe in Hawaii and sailed it back to France. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm reading that during the war. At the end of the war, Tor Heidel came along and he said the Polynesians didn't, canoes were no good as sailing ships, effectively. Right. So therefore the um, original settlers, the Central Pacific, Tahiti, Marquises and that area, uh, the question was where had they come from? And he said because their double canoes and outrigger canoes were not seaworthy, that the only seaworthy boat available was the log raft sailing boats right, of, the, yeah. of uh, Central America. Yeah. And he was totally wrong yeah. because he, he either didn't know, but he never admitted to Eric de Bishop. Mm. So there I am, a dreamer and everything at the end of the war. And then when his uh, story came out and the film which I went to London in the yeah. pissing rain hitchhiking yeah. well, to yeah, see mm. and I'm sitting there saying he's wrong he's wrong yeah yeah great but you must have <laughs> did you come from a seafaring family or oh, I come from a north country family did you really so, yes. what, so yeah why Building. were you interested in <laughs> yeah yeah Building family. so why were you interested in sailing well you went by a mountaineer did you just want to get away from it no, it no 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 I was uh, also, from the age of 16, I was a fell walker in the north of England, and then a rock climber. Ah, so you wanted a bit of adventure. Now, being outdoors, adventure, mm. travelling. He travelled mm. all through Europe just after. And then, mm. yeah, starting at 19, right, I yeah. went on a study course through Europe for three or four years. Do you right. think there was something, have you, have you ever established where the yearning for the sea came from? Um, Alice Sky, isn't it? Was it? So well, I, I was rock climbing on the Alice Sky, and there's, there's a thing called an inaccessible pinnacle on the coolings. Oh, I see, okay. And I looked out yeah. at the locks, and uh, I thought, I want to go on the sea. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, how it that, ends. Yeah, because that's a fairly open, barren uh, island, isn't it? Pardon? It's a fairly open, barren yeah. island, the Isle of Skye. In your yeah. case, also reading lots of books about mm. it. You know, with Eric the Bishop's book, yeah, and a lot of other sailing books. And yeah. So did you design this boat before, before you actually walked? This the boat has been designed sail, about or? six years ago. Right. That no, was designed for a, a prize. It won the yeah. prize. In but your original time. design? Its first design was, was to prove... How much sailing had you done before you came up with it? That I had worked in the Thames Estuary and I had associated with barge skippers. Right, okay. And according to my father. Well, you built a little boat, a little mm. boat. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It wasn't yeah. a success. Right. And then you converted a lifeboat yeah. and yeah. made that sail. You sailed it to Germany. Right, okay. So you, you sort of messed around this boat, but it yeah. weren't that successful. But then that fascination came in with sort of Pacific design boats? Yeah, I, it was mm. Thor uh, Right, okay. And I said, I'm going to prove him wrong. That must be wonderful. Well, that, that that because that was very powerful. Okay, it wasn't. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a like huge, tough well, yeah, you <laughs> The concept. Right. Because of my lack of knowledge. That's a tiny model, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's not a big model. Mm -hmm. um, because of my... Yeah. That wasn't the one, it was a, a No, photo. this is... The, yeah, you had a photo of them, but that was the actual model. That oh, you had okay. the photo. Yeah, I went there yeah. and took the actual model. Yeah, I went recently. And, and I think uh, that has been redone up. And right. No, it looks and exactly the same as your photo. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Not well, that big got, cabin. No, that was on there too. I'll was show it? you the photo. But, um, uh, that was the inspiration for Tangaroa. Yeah. Uh, where is it? No. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's the same model. It's the same model, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Now then, that was the inspiration. But the reality is, the boat I built was infinitely cruder. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can just show the pictures, honey. Look, well, you okay. built. Oh my goodness. It's a, you know, it's a, crude. It that's had. A, that's a, a traditional form. You can see a thing. shape, but it's mm. flat bottom, slab sided. Oh, it is, yeah. Because that was the only way I could get oh, it two oh, foot wide thing. to sleep on the inside. Oh, is that you there, I presume? Yeah, that was me, young and yeah. beautiful. <laughs> hair on my head. That's the uh, fantastic that? German woman, Ruth, who uh, only died three years ago. To right, well, I sail mm. that with two German girls. That's not the one There's you sail around the world, is it? No, no, no. Uh, across the Atlantic. But I made uh, the. Did you really? Yeah, first. Good grief. This is in Falmouth 60 years ago. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> that place so that was the. It's still there, you see. That's oh, Falmouth. Let's have a look there. at that picture again. Can I have a little look? That's James. Fantastic. There's a little film which you can Look see via our website. That's a very which, deck, you've seen it, it, have you? Yeah. It's on YouTube now. It's a little film done by Pate News about it's it. It's there, right? Oh, seconds. Pate News, I'd love to see that. Yeah, By the way, that piece of wood in the corner there yeah. is the tiller of the little Tangaroa. You would rather forget the, uh, the tiller and rudder on the Tangaroa, wouldn't you? I've just finished reading, oh. reading the book <laughs> <laughs> and all the problems you had with the rudder. That's the tiller. Well. It was ignorance. <laughs> I just used a straight inch rod, but of course it fractured with the vibration. Mm. Yeah. In those post-war years, don't forget, mm. I was surrounded by men, mm. only a few months older, maybe two years older than myself, who'd been flying aeroplanes over Germany, right. dropping bombs, who'd been fighting yeah, yeah. in Italy, the concept of, of self-reliance and doing things mm. was, was common. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. quite a different attitude than now. There's not that yeah, yeah, different yeah, attitude. Yeah, yeah. Those fears, oh, you can't do that. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, what I was doing was nothing compared to what these men were doing. Yeah, yeah, quite, yeah. And that's, uh, that, I remember seeing something about Shackleton. And uh, when he got back, it was in the middle of the First World oh, War. And uh, he had no recognition at all because there was much more serious things yeah. that were going on. And um, mm. yeah, he was kind of shunned in a way because they felt he should be fighting. Yes. Yeah. Messing around. Messing around. Yeah, messing around. yeah. Exactly. exploring. <laughs> a lot younger than you are, but I'm pleased I sort of grew up around that, that time yeah. where uh, well, so me, much me of the world too. was unknown and there was a, there was a real I, sense I, of exploration. Yeah, I grew up in the 50s. You know, yeah. And that was much nicer than now, I think. Well, I do as well, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased that I was part of that because it was, mm. for me, it was all, and a lot of it was unexplored. I mean, mm. he, well, it's been such journeys. a narrow window. I mean, when you mm. think from the first cruising man, if you like, ocean explorations, which was really only began around your time in the 50s and perhaps near the Bishop's time, yeah. the 40s, when people were doing mm. it for pleasure, mm. to the late 60s, when the first single handed round the world races and those pioneering yeah. days then into the 70s and that was pretty much the end of it then it became rather mainstream yeah, to yeah, sail yeah. around the world in fiberglass yeah. boats and mm. now look at it i mean the anchorages are just swamped you know yeah. Yeah. charter industry's gone growing yeah, like topsy with gps yeah. coming in the 80s and that it all became so much yeah, easier yeah no that's right that's why it's nice yeah. so sort of, it was a nice era i think mm. Um, well, I, it was I, a nice I, era. Well, I was yeah. very fortunate. Then, yeah. I grew up sailing as a little child. Did you really? Yes, yeah. When he was crossing oceans, I was having sort of boaties. Yeah. Holiday times and yeah. Yes. weekends. So I was, you mm. know, my father took the whole family. Fairly simple, basic boating, really. You know, not none of this sort of luxury stuff that now. Yeah, yeah. It was inland Dutch waters, but, yeah. you know, I'd have to go a stove and that's it. Yeah, right. Isn't it? I do ask myself, 
Are we over romanticizing the past? No, we're not. No. We're definitely not. I don't know. You don't have to ask yourself that. I think, yeah. um, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe when we're a bit younger and we look through, look at the world in different eyes, but uh, you can't get away from the fact that when you sailed, you didn't have contact with the land that was, you know, it was like sitting unknown, out. Wasn't it? Yeah, you it was. had no idea. You didn't have these great weather charts that we get now. And, mm. uh, well, actually, you know, even you when could, we sailed around the world what, 20 years ago, we didn't have a guide. No, yeah. no. We had VHF radio. We didn't yes, have yeah, SSD yeah. radio. We didn't yeah. have satellite phones. We, didn't. Yeah. we then went on to discuss Spirit of Gaia, the Warham's own boat and flagship of the fleet. At 63 feet long, James describes it as a floating island. After 20 years of cruising, including a circumnavigation, she has just undergone a major refit in Greece. These decks we're just having to replace. Yes. We're having to replace one. What yeah, timber are you using on your decking like that? But this was yellow cedar. Mm. That was the old stuff. But now we, uh, we bought some, it's more of a hardwood. And she's what, 20, 20 years old now? Yeah, is, that, is that your boat, is it? Yeah. yeah. That one? yeah. Where's that one at the moment? She's in, in Greece. Greece. Uh, we only yeah. came back a week ago. Okay. Yeah, we, we've just been working. That's a nice picture. Yeah, I think Who's that? It's a Spanish lady. Oh, is it? Oh. Back in, in, in the 90s when we were. That will increase sales, this is, won't it? <laughs> this is Gaia now. <laughs> this is, was taken oh, yes. just before we left. Gosh, there's a lot of cabin space up But there, we've got the masts yeah. up again. Right, oh, so mm. she's very close to yeah, going back Yeah, it's still needs anti fouling on, but. Um, mm. so. He's looking good. Yeah. yeah. That's a big boat now, isn't it? No, we've got all awesome. new paint on all it's that. It's like the floating island when it yeah. keeps going. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. But she's we've got new slats cool. all on that and they need to Wait, was that built funny. here or was that built? Yeah. I was built here. Was that really? Between yeah. here and the, the other good end of the yeah. But uh, we've got new lashings on the beams, new new Dyneema rigging. How do you get the holes? How do you actually get the holes down at the wall? Dining well, we the came out yeah, the front and down the village and launched on the beach. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> I've not seen these photographs. No, they're brand new. I just put them Fantastic. on the other day. But uh, So what, what, what size is that? But this is, 15. we have a new deck. She's 63. Right. Gosh, so we had to make a whole new set of decking here because that was... So how many crew would you have on a boat that size to run it? Well... It's nice to run it with about four or five right. or more. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've run it with three adults, really. Yeah. And Jamie. Are there many around the world yeah. that size? Is that? There are yeah. a number of them, actually. Right. Yeah, so that was our new deck that we just made. The cup boat, the latest catchman, yes. they're all sailing in wetsuits. Well, we don't want to live in wetsuits, so we um, throttle the boat down. Yeah, yeah. To a working oh, speed of somewhere else. between eight to twelve knots. Now we've got these uh, dead eyes on the end of it. I'm just... James then began to explain something that had puzzled me for a long time. Why isn't there a friendly bond between the Polynesian Voyaging Society, who operate the Hokulea, and James Warham, who is one of the earliest revivalists of Pacific voyaging craft and father of the catamaran? Francis Cowan, who had sailed with Elder Bishop on his raft voyage. Yeah, yes. so, because Elder Bishop had done the Anyhow, raft. let me finish what well, happened. Yeah. This boat, before this gathering of the great canoes, made the first voyage from Rarotonga, just to with ordinary lads on board, to, right. New, Zealand. Lads, yes. Yes. to New Zealand. Was the Hokalea came in, and they was told to stay out of Auckland Harbour well, the, the whole career was towed in. What? Right. And uh, I met. This was the mid 80s, yeah. I, I think. met the Maori builder up there, and he was broken because he was pushed to one side. They had built a real Polynesian boat stitched in that. Mm. And, and it was lying that. outdoors, yeah. uncared for at the museum, yeah, yeah. Papita. And then for this big gathering, they needed a new boat. No. And they didn't have logs, so they cannibalized. Yeah, what they, have they done? They've they the cut French the government. bottom dugout canoe of this off and built this monstrosity with it. It's this thing that's. Excuse me, let me finish. Yeah. Oh, I see. You know, that doesn't look, the proportion doesn't look it's right wrong. on that. 
<laughs> Can it just start again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the reason why the French Tahitian government did this, destroyed the real boat and that, to suck up to the whole Calais, was because one month later... Unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week, but we will be back next Friday with part two. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell to be notified every time we upload. We hope you enjoyed this episode and would like to help us make more productions by becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a video. You can find a link in the description below. Thank you for watching.